Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to be looking at some of the basics of the toolbar in the Promethean Active Inspire software. Uh, when you open Active Inspire, by default, the toolbar is going to open over here on the right hand side of the flip chart file. There are three columns to the toolbar that you can see. The third column is uh, ever changing, it's fluid. Uh, it populates as you use different tools to give you quicker access the next time you need them. For example, if I open my tool menu and let's say I'm going to pull out a protractor, uh, I can use the protractor as needed and then when I close it, you'll notice that over on this third column the protractor has now populated so the next time I need that tool it's easy for me to get to. Uh, if you'd like to close that third column, it's easy to do. Up here at the top of your toolbar, you've got your toolbar menu. And if you simply choose Roll In, that third column goes away and it streamlines the toolbar just a little bit. Uh, the toolbar, as I said by default, is opened to the right-hand side of the page, but there are other options for you. For example, if you teach a younger grade, like kindergarten or first grade, and your students are not tall enough to reach the toolbar, you can dock it down to the bottom by using the menu. And it's the same toolbar, it's just placed over here towards the bottom. So on these toolbar options menu, you can dock it to the left, to the right, to the top, to the bottom, or you can have it floating where you can pull it out and put it wherever you want. But by default, the toolbar goes to the right hand side. Now some of the more common tools that you're going to need to know about um, obviously page forward and page back that's how you scroll through the pages of your flip chart one important tool to remember is the select tool it's the one that looks like the little black arrow and that is your home base that is your off key for every other tool so anytime you finish using a tool to turn that tool off you would go back to the select tool you have three annotation tools the pen the highlighter and the eraser. Okay. They each either make marks or they erase marks. So for the pen, if I turn on my pen, the color palette that's located on the toolbar, this is how I change color. So if I wanted a red mark, it's as simple as that. You'll notice that uh, there are four dots that allow you to increase or decrease the width of the pen mark. There's also this uh, width slider that I can slide up if I need to make a nice big fat mark on my page. Okay. The highlighter works the exact same way. The only difference is that the highlighter makes translucent marks that you can see through. Okay. And then the eraser will erase any annotation mark that you have on your page. If you want to change the color of the pen and you don't see the color you're looking for, you can replace one of the colors on the color palette simply by right clicking and either choosing from this larger color palette that appears or the color wheel. Let's say I want a darker green than what I had available. So I click to change and now I have that darker green. If I have lots and lots of annotation marks all over my page and I don't want to take the time of erasing those one by one, another option for me is my cleaner, my clear bottle, okay, and I can clear the annotations and they all go away. That's a quick way to get rid of any annotation marks. That will only work with annotations. Okay. Another option you have is the fill tool looks like a little paint bucket and I can fill the page background or any shape that I place on the page as well. If I want to clear the page also with my clear bottle here. Okay. The shape tool has lots of options for you. Okay. When you click on the shape tool you get your shape options that pop up over here and also a little double arrow down at the bottom that when you click on even more options for shapes. 
So let's say that I want to create a square. Okay. As I choose the square, I have a small color palette up here. This is going to be my interior color. So if I want a yellow square, I'm going to choose it yellow right here on this color palette, the fill color. Okay. The main color palette on your regular toolbar, this is your outline color. So if you want a red outline with that yellow square, then when I click and hold, my square appears. I can size it, but whenever I'm finished placing my square on, I need to turn the Shapes tool off by going back to Select. Okay. Now if I decide that I want to change the color, instead of a yellow interior, I want a light blue interior, then again I can use my Fill tool which looks like a paint bucket. Turn the fill tool off by going back to select. There's also a text tool. Looks like a big T. So when I click on that T, I get all of these text options that pop up. When I click, it gives me the option to place a text box wherever on the page I want it to be. I can make the text larger. I can change the type of text and then simply type in what I want to type in. But again, to turn that text tool off, go back to select. And then if I need to completely reset the page, this icon the little recycle symbol allows me to completely reset. Those are some of the tools that are available to you on the Promethean Toolbar and through this series of videos we'll be looking at several others as well.